Okay. So welcome back everyone to the afternoon session. And um, Kenta in his last lecture, he'll go over all the Riemann solvers exact and approximate that you have been uh, discussing during the tutorial session. So sort of to consolidate the whole picture as one story. Thank you. <clears throat> welcome back to the <clears throat> hydrodynamic lecture. This is a final lectures in my part. So in final parts, I'm gonna give you an answer for the tutorial from one to four. Okay, let's start from the tutorial run. And the, the target of the tutorial run is generate a call to solve the sort of problem in non-relativistic hydrodynamics exactly, uh, but numerically. The first steps we have to do are obtain the, the intermediate pressure P3, given the, the initial state P4, uh, uh, P1, and CS1, and CS2, right? So the first task is to solve the, these equations in terms of the P3, but as you know, have already noticed, this is a nonlinear equation for P3, which means that you have to solve numerically, uh, but the exa almost exactly. So the Python script I gave you, the, the script name, name is a sort.py, and uh, solve this, uh, this problem, right? <clears throat> so here, so you set up the, time at which you want to make a, a profile and x0 is an initial discontinuity position so in this uh, the, the, uh in this uh, plot i assume the the numerical domain is from zero to one and at, at the uh, between the two so you have a uh, discontinuity state well uh, state one and a state two a uh, state four sorry I find Max, I will explain uh, later on. And then, so, so we specify the uh, equation of state, a uh, gamma index of the equation of state 1.4, and left state or state one, uh, low one, uh, velocities, and P1. And the sound velocity of the ones, uh, state one is, uh, is calculated by these equations, right? <laughs> also, uh, here's, uh, I get, uh, so you specify the uh, initial value for the full state or R state, R4, U4, and P4, and then the sound velocity is calculated by the, this formula. Okay, then so let's solve the this equations. So to solve the these equations in this Python script employs us Newton Lapson method to find a nonlinear to, to do a nonlinear root finding in this equation. To do that, so we need to specify the initial guess for the other P3. I, I think that whatever you, uh, so this, uh, the, I think this Python script doesn't, may not strongly depend on the initial guess. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, um, if you want to inter interested in, please change this initial value from like a 0.1 or 0.100 or something like that. Okay, here is a main part for the newton lapson method. So if P3 is the, uh, from left-hand side term minus right-hand side term equal to zero is a solution, but I defined here as F equal left-hand side term um, minus right-hand side. Here, right? Here is our left-hand side term and right-hand side term. And in Newton Lapson, so you need to evaluate the gradient of the this df uh, fp3 as a function of p3. So we you analytically calculate the, the differentiation of the this equation in terms of the p3. This is a just expression for the uh, fp3 prime. Then by using the current value of the p3 here, current of the value of the p3 and FP3 itself and the DFP3, so you can guess the new value for the P3. <laughs> because the P3 should be the, the positive value because this is the pressure. I just put the lower value like a 10 to the minus three in these equations because uh, this doesn't uh, ensure the positivity of the pressures. Then so also uh, the, I estimated the error by comparing the old value of the P3 and new, new value of the P3. And then, so if the error is small enough, you exit 
this loop, right? I set uh, this uh, trunk at uh, Toriel and say, like, as a 10 to the minus four, something like that. Something like that. If the, this condition is not satisfied, this loop should be repeat by replacing the P3 as a new, new value of the P3 new, right? Then so we iteratively solve these equations in this way. So after, so you get the convergent result of this equation in terms of P3. Now you have a P3 <coughs> state at a pressure in, in the state three, something. You have written first line. First line is the uh, in Python script. Can you hear me? So inside the folder, we have shared all the Python, Python and Fortran scripts. You can refer. Yeah, you can see that that the script directory. Okay, so now we have a P three. So the, you can estimate the state of the three. And okay, firstly, shock position, shock velocity and shock position. Shock velocity is given by these equations. If you don't remember, please look at the lecture note again. On this source, you have uh, the shock velocity position and the shock, shock, velocity, sorry, shock velocities and the shock velocity as follows uh, by using the velocity of the shock from the, the, uh, from the initial discontinuities. And um, then so you can estimate a U3 and a P3, a low three. Basically, you know, it, this comes from the Lanky union relations, um, as I explained. And also you can calculate the state two, which means that, okay, state one and state two is a one, two, uh, sorry, two, Three and stage four. Right? This is the shock, and this is the level half fraction. They are fraction, contact to discontinuity, and shock. <clears throat> so, in stage, stage two is uh, given by these equations, and in, in intermediate pressure should be continuous in the two and the three, and also the velocity should be continuous because uh, this is a contact to discontinuities. And from a but condition for the layer uh, fraction wave, the sound velocity is given by these equations. Right. Ah, sorry, from Adiaba, uh, by the condition, density in the low two state is given by these equations. Or then, so you can calculate uh, the sound velocity in the uh, two state two. So now that you know that the uh, velocity of the U2 state here, so uh, the condition, uh, contact discontinuity position is given by these equations. <laughs> this uh, is implemented in a Python script in almost directory. Uh, Give me one second. It's frozen. It's frozen, sorry. Hmm. Let me stop the screen share for a second. Okay, let's switch the, uh, the screen to this one and here. Okay, now so you can calculate the U3 and low 3 by this equation and U2, P2 and blah, 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 something like this and the contact discontinuities, uh, the position of the contact discontinuity, right? So the final task to 
get the internal structure inside the layer, uh, layer function wave. <laughs> How to do that? So in layer function waves, uh, in this particular problem, the propagation uh, wave pattern speed is described by u minus cs. So I define a phi uh, as a, uh, for uh, wave, uh, wave pattern speed, and this, is, uh, this gives a parameter to describe the internal structure of the, the layer function wave. So now you, you know that U1 and CS1 and U2 and CS2, I, I mean the head of the hairs and the tail over here. So you get the uh, phi head and phi tail um, by plugging the U1, U2, CS3 and CS1, which means that the phi parameter which describe the internal structure of the layer of action wave should exist between the phi tail and phi head, right? So by changing the, by appropriately changing the value of the phi in this range, so layer function position is given by these equations and the, the, uh, the sound velocity inside the layer function is also given by these equations. Um, and then so the velocities and the densities and the pressure by given these equations. And this is uh, how to get the internal structures of the layer function wave. And here is a layer function wave the internal structure calculations. So first, yeah, you uh, so I estimated the head and the tail of the layer function wave as a phi one and phi two, and by uh, creating the array uh, of the phi between the phi phi one and phi two. Uh, in this example, I just you know did use a ten or eleven uh, eleven uh, elements, and then so layer function wave position and the velocities and density pressure, blah, 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 is calculating these equations, right? Then, so finally, the final task is, uh, this is a completion of the task, the final uh, the, uh, completion of the solved problem. And then, so to plot this uh, low and velocity and p young, I just generate uh, uh, the array of the low and the up and plugging uh, each solution was like low one. If the x is uh, in direction, the x direction is uh, smaller than the, uh, the head of the head of the, the layer function uh, tail away, and this uh, state should be the low one, uh, state one. And if the, this is uh, uh, smaller than the uh, layer function wave, then so this is an inside the layer function. So we, we plug the, the layer function internal structure of the layer, layer function wave to low one, low up. And if the, the X is uh, uh, smaller than contact to discontinuity, this describes the P3 and U3, uh, sorry, low two and U2. And after that contact to discontinuity, so the state of the three appears in here. And finally, the uh, final state is a uh, four state. Then so now, so you can make, you can generate uh, a layer of the low and U and P. And then so the pro, the, this equation like this, I think the, Answering. Give me a second. <clears throat> Right. Okay. See, and here's a profile for the sort of program and uh, blue for this, this. So you have a state one, and here's inside, uh, inside the left function wave and the state two up to here. And that the, uh, the contact discontinuity, the density jump, and then state three appears and shock wave appears and density jump and state four appears, right? And the green is a velocity and here is a state one and here is a ins inside a layer function wave and here to here is a U2, uh, the state two, but uh, in velocity, the should be continuous in, at the contact with continuity. There is no structure between two, uh, state two and three. And at the shock, the, the velocity jumps uh, discontinuously, then state four appears. That thing is very similar for the pressure, uh, which is Siankar, 
state one, layer function wave, state two, state three, and jab and state four. So this is a solution for the TD uh, uh, sort problem in non-relativistic hydrodynamics. So do you have any com uh, question or you know comment for this Python script? No. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> the next tutorial is the uh, generate an um, approximate Riemann solver by programming language to solve the sort of problems. So I have already uh, provided to you the, uh, the sample script written by Fortran. So let me explain the detail of this Fortran program. And give me one second, I have to connect to this my server. Main.f90 uh, is the main file for this program. So, <clears throat> so uh, in this sample code, uh, program, I provided, the, I added a couple of the, the option to specify, uh, for example, time integration scheme, like uh, RK4 means a force uh, a long equator four, and RK3 is a long equator three. May, maybe too small way. Okay, this line uh, specified uh, the time integrators. If you uh, specify RK4, which means that you you want to employ the Lunge Kutta 4, and RK3 case, uh, the three step Lunge Kutta. And the second line is specified in the Riemann solver. So, in these examples, uh, I explained that uh, the low type scheme and the HL type scheme and uh, a more simplified one, HLE and LLF. So, you can choose uh, four, you know. Yeah, yeah, four options for the Riemann solver. And the final option is a cell reconstruction scheme. Uh, cell reconstruction is uh, how to calculate the, the left and right state of the physical quantity at the cell interface, right? First of all, I mean that the just copy from the center to the cell center to the cell, uh, cell interface. And PPM means the third order of, uh, polynomial, uh, parabolic, uh, pa uh, parabolic, uh, uh, parabolic, BPM, third order, you know, paraboloidal uh, reconstruction method. Anyway. So in this example, um, first uh, you uh, you have to specify the grid number in X direction. It starts from zero to four hundred in, in a sample case, but you can and you you can choose this value like a one thousand or eight hundred or whatever. And I, I also did it, uh, the uh, prepared a, a ghost grid in uh, three ghost grid zone in a positive and uh, positive and negative directions. And the, in this as, uh, the, the sample, the new mega domain is between the x equal zero to x equal one. And it max is a uh, iteration in time step. And this is a uh, uh, this is not relevant here. So please specify the large number. Okay. And uh, then, so you define uh, blah, 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 and uh, for, okay. I'm gonna explain this parameter later on, but uh, for sort of problems, so the, you need to specify the gamma of the equation of state, 1.4 in this case, and the uh, exact solution, this is a little bit here. And, okay, I will skip, I will explain one by one. And then, so we start the simulation. First, you define a coordinate um, by uh, defining the delta x, the width of the grid resolution. And with this grid resolution, you can define the coordinate x. 
And this gives you the, the, the time step of delta t. Um, normally, this is a CF number times delta x. And CF number should be between the 0 to 1. In this example, I put a 0.4, but you may change to a 0.8 or 0.9. Or if you uh, specify a greater than one, you may have a numerical instability according to the, the uh, CFO, uh, the uh, von Neumann analysis. Anyway. So let's set the initial conditions. And so the programs uh, left state, right state is given by this, right? <laughs> and then so you plug this left and low state to the ally of the density, velocity, and P. If the coordinate X is a uh, left-hand state and uh, from 0 to 0.5, uh, you use a left state, otherwise you, you're gonna use a light state, right? And this is a, in, this is a sort of uh, so-called a, a primitive uh, variable in non-relativistic uh, the, the, uh, fluid dynamics. Then you com uh, compute the conserved quantities from this variable, right? Uh, low itself is a conserved quantity in non-relativistic fluid dynamics. And that two low times the momentum, low times u is a conservative quantity in momentum equations. And then so the, this is gives you the energies, E plus uh, energy E, which is given by the kinetic energy, one over two rho times u square plus P over gamma minus one. Because uh, I assume the gamma rho equation of state internal energy is converted from P over gamma minus one. Okay, so this is not relevant here. Then, so you specify the time at which you want to make a profile for the sort of problem. In this particular problem, the time is a 0 0.1154. And then, so let's start the evolutions. If you specify the RK4, Lunge Kutta 4, you need to do the four iteration during one step according to the, you may not be familiar with the Lunge Kutta 4, but uh, in Lunge Kutta 4, if we want to solve this uh, OD, uh, ODE, so first uh, start from the N and the X, uh, slice of the N in terms of the T, and you calculate the K1 by plugging the, the XN and TN. Um, by using the K1, and you, uh, in the second iteration, you, uh, you, you can estimate the K2, as a function of delta uh, t plus delta t, uh, delta t over, over two, half time step, um, plus uh, x plus delta t over two times k1. And then so the third iteration is given by like this equation, and the fourth, uh, fourth iteration is given by this equation. And finally, you get uh, the, uh, the x in uh, the next slice n plus one as function, as a like this. This is a uh, the, the algorithm for the RK4. So four iteration means that you, yeah, you need a one, two, three, four, four, four times of the calculation, right? And for our case, uh, three case, uh, the, the <coughs> structure is uh, more or less similar, but uh, here is a IB, mean that the IB runs through the one, two, four, which means that you need a four iterations during a one time step, right? So this is, a, a, if the IB equal one case, this is a first iteration. Uh, then, so you first, you first store the current initial data to the, the previous, uh, as the previous one, uh, which is described by the QZL in this case. And QRK is also the, the defined as a, uh, the zero clear for the QRK, which is necessary, uh, which restore the, these variables during the, uh, the time step, right? <clears throat> and also that the, the time is at half of the delta t and the CBB is a sum co coefficient, which described uh, this part, right? <clears throat> okay, then so, Also, so I define the QB as an intermediate uh, the, the variable uh, for the Q conserved quantities. And I just copy the QB in the current value at the first stage of the initial uh, Runge Kutta, T and T N plus one. First stage is here, uh, yes, here to here. 
T, uh, Q, B is uh, just a uh, the condition in here, right? <clears throat> then, so let's start, uh, let's uh, look at from the first order reconstruction, first reconstruction case uh, is uh, just, <clears throat> So you have a cell at the I, and the left and the right state is here, and I plus one. First order uh, the reconstruction is just copy from here to here, and here to here. So left and right state is this, is just copy from the right. Uh, sorry, in this case, uh, left, right. Okay. I minus one, I. So I want to consider that here, this uh, interface, and the right state is just copy from the uh, I, uh, sorry, this is, <laughs> index is a J, but anyway, I, and the left state is a I minus one, just copy. And the velocities is given by the momentum divided by densities, and the energy is uh, just uh, the, the conserved quantities. <sighs> Oh, it's frozen again. Hmm. Give me one second. So I hope can you can see my screen this sample grow program Okay. Yeah, now so here is a left and right state. It's not easy to see, but left and right state here. And uh, the, uh, the energy is given by the dislocations, of course. And from energies on the left and the left state and the density velocity in the left and left state, the pressure is calculated something like this. <clears throat> so now, so you are ready to, to uh, the, the, the estimate uh, the flux, numerical flux in HLE and HL, uh, LLF. So for example, for the left state, it's uh, uh, the three velocities, uh, three characteristic speed appears, U minus C1, uh, CS, U and U plus CS. And here's, okay, U minus CS, U and U. And uh, the, the sound velocity is given by that in terms of the pressure on the density in low uh, left state, and flux in the left state is given by this, just that uh, this is a physical flux, right? The same things uh, can be applied for the right state. And now you have a three characteristic velocities in, uh, in a light state and a left state. The most simple way to estimate uh, the numerical flux is a lo local lux fluid or LLF uh, numerical flux. So the, in these schemes, you only need a maximum wave, uh, absolute value of the maximum uh, characteristic peak by plugging the B, uh, B1, B2, B3, L and B, uh, B1, B2, B2, uh, B3, all by uh, taking the absolute value and then search the maximum value. <laughs> then, so then you make a flux, it's just given by the arithmetic, arithmetic average of the physical flux in the left and the right state. 
and plus these uh, additional terms, um, which were the, the, the <coughs> upwind nature, uh, upwind up scheme at uh, these continuities. And this is a local lux Friedrich version. And uh, HLE is uh, one more advanced ones. And you estimate a left and right propagating wave, different way. For the left propagating characteristic, you take a minimum value of the uh, left, uh, left propagating uh, the, the characteristic in left uh, L state and R state. For the light propagating uh, characteristic speed, you take a maximum for the U plus, D, U plus CS for the left and right side. Then, so uh, the numerical flux is given by this formula and uh, lamb, uh, light propagating characteristic speed times a physical flux in the left state minus a uh, uh, left propagating characteristic speed times the physical flux in the light state plus this additional term, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> okay, this is a HLLE scheme. HLLE scheme is a one most uh, uh, the advanced one. So after evaluating the HLL uh, uh, physical flux, you may have a three possibility. If the left propagating wave is uh, positive, which means that the Riemann fan is something like this, and the next step should be the left, uh, uh, left state. In the inter intermediate case, uh, the, the state should be the HLL state, which is described by the numerical flux in the HLL state. And if the light propagating the characteristic wave has a negative value, which means that the Riemann fan is something like this, and the next step should be the described as R state. So this is the HLL scheme. For low scheme is more complicated one. I, I don't have a slide. Okay, let's go back to the... Low scheme, okay, first uh, you calculate the low average from the left and right hand side quantities like this. And then by using the these value, you, uh, these quantities, you can estimate the light and the left eigenvectors by, or, or and the sound velocity CS. Also the, the, uh, the diagonal matrix of the lambda. So this is, um, directly implemented here. So first low average is calculated for the enthalpy, specific enthalpy and the densities and the uh, densities. Uh, yeah, uh, the densities, sorry, densities and enthalpy. And the, the, uh, the sound velocity is calculated from the low average quantities H bar and uh, U bar by given by these equations. And then, so now you are ready to calculate the light and the left eigenvectors given something like this. Okay, this is just element for here and here. And also eigenvalue of the lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three by taking the absolute average. So now is a matrix calculations. The low matrix is uh, just calculate the light eigenvectors Uh, light eigenvectors and uh, uh, the diagonal, uh, the, the matrix of the lambda tilde and the right, left eigenvectors, which is calculated in here, all times uh, lambda times uh, L eigenvectors. And then so the DQ described uh, the difference between the R and the L state for the conserved quantities, which gives uh, here U I plus one minus U one. Then, so now you are ready to calculate the numerical flux in this way. So the flux is, uh, okay. Sorry, now you have uh, these terms and these terms, and these terms is a matrix and these terms are vectors. So you multiply this matrix to the this vector, which is given by DFLX here. So now, so the uh, numerical flux is given by the arithmetic average of the left and the right state of the physical flux plus uh, this uh, collection term, 
which uh, guaranteed to capture the discontinuities. <laughs> this is a low scheme, and uh, this is a low scheme. So at the uh, after you get the uh, numerical flux fx one two three, so now you uh, you you can update the value of the conserved quantity q uh, from this equation. This is uh, nothing but the this expression, right? So also the uh, the intermediate uh, the value of the uh, QLK is stored for the final step of the Lundy-Gutter by an appropriate uh, the coefficient CBB, and then so the uh, yeah, then so you now update the active lesion of the inner domain. So the, you need a, a boundary condition for the negative lesions and ghost lesion of the ghost in the negative and the positive directions. And in this uh, example, just a copy from the active lesion to the, the, to the ghost lesions. <laughs> so then, so I just, you know, pretend to be a relativistic one, but uh, you need to the primitive recovery. It's a, not a, it's a direct simulation, it's a direct calculation. And uh, low is a conserved quantity Q itself, and velocity is a momentum divided by the divided by the uh, densities, and energy is just energies, and the pressure is given by the energy plus uh, one over two rho u square. And this is a completion for the, this sub-cycle. Then you repeat uh, this procedure to the here and here, right? <clears throat> so then after that, uh, the time is passed, uh, the time is, uh, is exceeds uh, some certain time, uh, you want to uh, make a profile, and this loop exists and put uh, output to the file 10 as uh, like our index and x uh, low, low u, and e. And this is the basic for the Riemann solver uh, with the first order uh, reconstruction. And uh, if the reconstruction is the not first order, uh, the, but uh, uh, PPM uh, scheme, so where is here? So <laughs> you reconstruct an left and R state, but now so you, you're gonna use uh, more information in the I minus two direction and I plus one direction to take into account the gradient or you know the profile for a smooth uh, for smooth case. Okay, how to do that? So, you know, the uh, this is a BPM reconstruction for the left and the right state with the uh, mean motor function as flux limit of limit the function. In this case, I assume the mean motor function. From this equation, now you can get the left and the right state. Uh, sorry, one. Left and right state of the here, right? So first I calculate the difference between the J plus one and the J index and J, J minus one and the J, J minus two. And then so by using the F mode is a mean mode function and uh, you can calculate the light and the left state. So by the way, in this uh, the equations, in this uh, the functions, uh, you need to if, uh, the, the specify the free parameter FBB, which is called the uh, uh, compression parameter in PPM reconstructions, and here, okay, we, we have learned that the B compression parameter in the mean mode function, and here should be, in, it should be between the one and the four in this case, right? So in this example, I think uh, I specify the relatively conservative value of the B, FBB as a two here. This is a compression parameter, but you can change this parameter from one to four, and you, you may also play. So what's going to happen if you uh, if you apply the more aggressive value like a four or a more conservative value like one, and uh, you can check that that how this uh, parameter choice did, uh, the, the, uh, affect the numerical solutions. Something like that. Okay. 
and for okay for velocities and for the energy thing uh, the same procedures and from the energy and velocity and uh, the, the densities you can calculate the left and right state of the pressures and the other way the, 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 uh, this is a PPM basically constructions. Okay, this is an example for the non relativistic Riemann solver for low scheme or HL scheme or HLE scheme or LLM scheme. Okay, so do you have a question, comment? No? Okay. Then, so let's go to the tutorial, uh, the tutorial three. Okay, the tutorial three is a generate or solve the Lehman problem in relativistic hydrodynamics. Sorry, this is this is called is written in analytically, but not exactly because you need a numerical computation. So let's solve the Lehman problem in relativistic hydrodynamics exactly. So in lectures, I explained that there are three limiting limiting cases and three uh, three possibilities, namely the uh, left propagating, light propagating shock, or left propagating layer function, light propagating shock, or left and light propagating layer function waves. But we don't know a priori which is a case uh, for given the initial condition. So to uh, to make these things simpler, so first we have to calculate the three limiting uh, limiting case for a relative relative velocities. First one is the first limitation, uh, first limiting case is a two shock uh, case, uh, which is described uh, BX tilde one, two, one S, uh, two S, sorry. Uh, in this case, uh, the uh, V one, two is the, the used to the here, and the P three prime one minus uh, uh, E three prime to one is calculated by solving the, this idea about uh, the, the tau body about, right? By solving that uh, this equation for a given the P2, uh, P, uh, P1 and P, uh, P, P1 and P2, and you can solve, uh, you get the H hat, and by plugging the H hat in this equation, you can get E3 plus one prime to one, right? <clears throat> so in sample program, Okay, so, okay, I will explain the Python script. And here's a relativistic Lehman.py. This is a, a the Python, a Python script. And then, so here is a just a, a, the, the specified initial position and the time you want to make a profile. And in this example, I Specified as three, you know, possibilities are three programs, are three kind of a, a, a sample. First one is a two shock uh, program, two shock waves appears out of uh, the case, and the intermediate one is uh, the two uh, three. This is a two layer function wave case, and the final one is the one layer function wave and uh, one shock wave in uh, in some set. So if you want to do, or uh, for example, two shock uh, waves. So please remove this comment out and please add a comment and here, something like that, right? This example specified a two layer function wave case anyway. So from the left and the uh, light state, so you calculate the, uh, the sound velocities, CS and internal velocities and uh, uh, specific entropy and also the uh, energy E, E is just, even by 
this equation. And then so the uh, the okay yeah then so the, the uh, this is a relative velocity from the initial conditions. So now so you can calculate that vx tilde here this quantity is vx tilde one two to s which is denoted you know, as a v1 one v1 underscore two s in this example. The first we define the coefficient a b c upper a b a c which correspond to the here a b c sorry in the case of the p3 to approach to the p1 right for example the coefficient a is a one plus blah 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 right a corresponds to the one plus gamma minus one times uh, light on the left sorry in this case the left is a one state and the right is a two to a state p a state two and over uh, divided the gamma pl right bc is the same and then so you can solve that this area but area but uh, tau body about the equations and the plus sign of the branch gives you the physical solution so then so you can get the h hat by sorry by this one h hat is a equation uh, the solution for that equation right then so the e hat e hat is the here this equations is given by this line just uh, just uh, this is just a representation of that line and then so finally you get the v1 uh, two underscore two s which described here right so now so you ha you have a one limiting case for a two shock wave case and next one is a one shock uh, one layer function wave and one shock uh, wave case in this case the uh, limiting case uh, the relative velocity of the limiting case is described by this one a plus a is a bit a messy function of something like this but in this case because the uh, situation is So in this situation, you have a left, left propagating, oh, sorry, left propagating, uh, the, this is a pressure, pressure profile, and uh, there are fraction waves, and you have an intermediate state, and here's a contact of this quantity, but it's continuous for the pressure, and, that, and then so the shock, uh, what is it? Give me a second, in this case. Uh, here, right. And then, so you have a uh, state uh, shock. Here is a shock, and here is a one state, and here is a three and three prime state. Because in this limit, now is a limiting case, In this limit, you take a P3 as a P2, which means that uh, this pressure is reduced, is connected to the directory of the P1. So you have uh, just one layer function wave in this limiting case, right? <laughs> so because a layer function wave is isentropic flow, then this uh, at the P3 state is given by these equations. And then from these densities and the pressures, you can calculate uh, the sound velocity at the P3 given by this formula. By plugging the, this one to the here, you can get the here, right? <laughs> this is how to calculate the VX12SR. Let's look at the, the, uh, the program. And P3 is uh, just a PL, sorry. <laughs> left and R, R is denote state two and the left state denote, uh, denote state one. 
So just copy the P, uh, light, uh, lighter state P2 uh, to the P3, and row three is given by the adiabatic condition, and the sound velocity is calculated. And finally, you calculate the A plus as a, per, uh, uh, as a function of the P3 by these equations. Then, so, so you now, so you evaluate that we want to underscore S uh, to uh, uh, SL, sorry, SL, which is the here, right? <clears throat> so the final one is a two layer function wave case. In two layer function wave case, a VX tilde one, two, two L is given by this one, S1, S2, and uh, upper S1 and S2. And this is a direct uh, implementation like this, right? S1 and S2 as a function of the left hand and right hand side pressures. And uh, you calculate a relativistic velocity, relative velocity for the, uh, this limiting case, uh, V1, 2 underscore 2 up. So now, so you, let, you have a three you know, limitation cases by comparing uh, the initial value of the uh, initial uh, the, the velocities, <laughs> relative velocities. Now, so we, you can guess the, which is the case in this program. So give me one second. Into the ball. Can you zoom into the ball? Yeah, maybe. Okay. If the, the, uh, the relative velocity in the initial state is greater than this one limiting case, the, 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 the next, uh, the final state should be the two shock waves. So now, then, so you need to solve these equations by, uh, okay, these equations, V minus one for the two shock cases minus uh, the uh, initial relative velocity go to zero in terms of the unknown value of the P3, right? <clears throat> So in this case, uh, uh, B, uh, the velocity in the B1 and B2 is, is described by these equations and uh, E3 or E3 prime is given by the tau adiabatic, uh, tau, tau adiabatic right? <clears throat> so in this uh, sample example, the line from 106 to 222 gives uh, two shock wave cases, right? Right here. If the initial velocity is greater than this uh, two shock wave as uh, the critical value. So let's solve the, let's solve the, these equations. So behind the shocks, three state is uh, the coefficient ABC for the adiabatic tau is given by these equations. And by solving that uh, the tau body of the equations, and you can estimate the H3 and E3. And then, so you can get uh, the uh, B1, B1X by this equations. Now, so you can get the P3 and P3 from the idea part. So behind the shell, three prime state is connected to the two state and three prime, three prime state. So, well, well, so, sorry. So, tau body of the for ABC is given by the left uh, or two, state two and uh, state three. And this H3 prime and E3 prime is obtained. Then, so you can calculate the B2 velocity in the, the, the two state, which describes uh, these equations. Right? So, now you are ready to calculate uh, the. Uh, in, uh, the relative velocities for v, uh, v12 by this formula. And let's solve that this f equal to del as a function of the unknown uh, value of the p3 or p3 prime. So again, here so I employed the, the newton lapson method to, uh, to solve the, these equations. So you, uh, uh, the final task is that you needed to evaluate the df F is a dysfunction, but the V12 is a complex function for the intermediate pressure P3 or P3 prime. Uh, but it's complex, but it's straightforward where forward you can already estimate a DF, like uh, something like this. <laughs> okay. 
Then, so you update the, the, uh, the P3 new value uh, by the Newton Lapson method, and you check the error. If the error, error is larger than the certain critical values, so let's repeat this procedure by replacing the P3 as a new value of the P3 new. And then, so if the iteration is in this sample example, if the iteration is greater than 100 times, which means that you don't get the convergent result, which means that you fail to converge. So let's, in that case, we have to modify or we have to fix something like uh, initial guess of the pressure. I realize that this problem is very sensitive to the initial guess of the pressures. So in this case, uh, we need to, to, to tune the initial pressure, initial guess. Anyway. And then, so now, so you have uh, uh, the, uh, state three and state three prime pressures. So same procedure gives you that, uh, uh, okay, from the adiab but, uh, 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 tau but uh, tau but, sorry, you can estimate H3, E3, and row three, and blah, blah, blah. And J, uh, J2 is a J square of the mass flux. Give me one second. Here, J square is a, a this one is a massive flux, which is gonna be used to evaluate the shock velocity Vs in this example. So by using the J2 here, J2 and uh, uh, where is the J2 now? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, by using the, uh, the dissipation, you can evaluate the shock uh, at the speed. <laughs> and the shock position is the uh, initial position times the shock velocity times T. The prime uh, state three prime is the same, but for the left uh, state, a lighter state and three prime state, but the P3, P3 prime is exactly the same as P3. So I replace uh, P3 prime to the P3, and then so you can get the H3 prime and blah, 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 blah. And then so now you have a shock position for the light propagating shock wave position and left propagating shock wave position. And at contact discontinuity is the speed is now, so you have a speed uh, between the intermediate state three and three prime. So you can uh, they, they obtain the, the contact discontinuity position by using the uh, B3 prime. So here to here is a just for plot. You create the, the array and you plug the, the other solution inside this uh, array and plot, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a two shock problem, two shock waves cases. Okay. The next one is the one shock wave and one layer function wave case. In this case, we have to solve these equations in terms of the unknown quantities of P, P uh, star or P3 or P3 prime. And in this configuration, the B1X is given by this equation and B2 is given by the equations. For shock adiabatic, tau, uh, tau adiabatic for, is gonna be used to calculate the E3 prime. And uh, in program, this is a case for the one layer shock wave and one layer function wave case. And uh, from the isentropic flow condition, row three is given by this, uh, sorry, row three is given by these equations and uh, sound velocities and uh, A plus as a function of P3 is given by this equation. This is a layer function wave uh, for case. And B1, the velocity is given by these equations. And this equation is nothing but the, this expression. And for the shock, uh, behind the shock, uh, again, so you're gonna use uh, adi uh, tau adiabatic by specifying uh, upper ABC like, like this. And H hat, E hat is obtained, are obtained. And velocity in two states is calculated, something like this. This expression B2 is nothing but the expression here. Then, so you calculate the relative velocity B1 and B2, and let's solve the, this equations, right? <laughs> Again, I, I define the F is as, a, uh, as a function of B12 minus 
B12 of the initial of uh, the value. And then so I employ the, this uh, Python script employs a, a neutron lapse method to obtain the new, uh, new value of the P3. And then so the F is a complex, a complex function of the P3, but you can analytically estimate that DF by something like this. And then so you update the, the, uh, the intermediate value of the uh, three uh, intermediate value pressures. <laughs> Also, you can estimate the error. If the error is larger than some certain value, you repeat this procedure until you get the solution. So in this, uh, sometimes uh, if you give the, you know, not good uh, initial guess for a P3, I realize that this loop uh, failed to converge. So maybe one interesting point by changing the, this initial guess and what's gonna happen so in this case. Okay, then so now, so you have a P3 on P3 prime state, and uh, let's, uh, uh, let's uh, calculate the left of propagation layer function wave uh, the structures by this, uh, by this procedures. So and now you have a piece uh, uh, intermediate pressure P3, and because of the layer function wave is an isentropic pro, you can get the low three, and C3, uh, C3. <laughs> sorry, uh, the sound velocities, and also the A plus as a function of the P3 and Px as well. So now, so you, uh, this is a, 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 a self-similar solutions. So you know that the self-similar pa parameters of the head and the tail of the, uh, of the layer function wave. So in, the, in this, uh, for this layer function wave, the self-similar parameter Z should exist be, uh, between a, a Z head and a Z tail. And since the, the sound velocity is and the velocity is described by the function of Z, you solve the, this equation to get the Z and CS and BX. After solving that this equation, you now have a sound velocity, and the sound velocity is described by this uh, less mass densities. And then, so by solving the these equations, you can get the densities, and then, so finally, you can get the pressures. So this is a bit a messy procedure, but uh, it is doable. And here is a uh, first. Uh, you estimate the head of the Z and head of the tail. And between the two, and uh, you need to solve the this equations, right? <coughs> Cs z and Cs as a function of z, and uh, Vx as a function of the z. Again, so I use uh, the Newton Lapson method to use uh, these nonlinear equations. And after you get the solution, you can convert from the sound velocity to the velocity uh, to the, the density. Again, you need to solve the nonlinear non linear root findings, something like, something like this. And then, so finally, you get the, the, the structure for the left of state of the layer function wave velocity, sound velocity, uh, densities, and the pressure, and something like this. And then, so the, this is a head, uh, the, the structures of the, uh, the, the layer function wave. Also, the contact of these continuities described by, uh, is given by these equations. For state three prime, it's uh, behind the shock, and you just calculate it from the P3 prime or P3. And uh, from this value, you can calculate a tau body about it, H3 prime and row three prime, and H3 prime, and blah, blah, blah. And then the, the shock speed is calculated by like this. And then the so final part is just for the protein. You just plug the, the, the solution into the array of the low B, X, and P. And then so you plot this solution. Okay, final possibility is a two layer function wave case. In this case, uh, you, can, you have to solve uh, these equations and B1 and B2 is described as this, uh, these, these equations uh, for the unknown quantities of P3 or P, uh, P, P prime, and this is a little bit straightforward here, uh, sorry, here, this is a two layer function wave case, and uh, from the adiabatic condition, you can guess the densities and uh, sound velocities and uh, A plus as a function of the P3, 
also in three prime state, you can get the, the A3 prime state. And so then, so you can get the, the uh, relatively reverse DP12, and you solve that these equations by the Newton Lapson method by a bit lengthy at the calculation for the uh, DF, right? And then, so, so you get the convergent result in terms of the P3. So then, so the Obtain the internal structure of the left hand propagating uh, wave is exactly the same for the, the previous phase case. This is a left propagating uh, layer function wave. I won't uh, uh, the explain the detail, but uh, calculating the internal structure of the left and the right propagating the, the layer function wave. Then, so you finally plug, uh, sorry, this is the light state. And here, finally, you plug this solution for the prop to, to, to the LA low and VXRP. And this is a complete solution for a Riemann problem for an arbitrary value. But uh, one possibility, I ignore the one possibility, namely for the vacuum case. So in this uh, script, I didn't take into account the vacuum case. But if you're interested in, uh, you can, you know, did you extend this Python script to the vacuum case. Okay, this is a Python script for relativistic Riemann solver. And as you may, see this example, it's a lengthy and uh, because you need a couple of nonlinear iteration, you can guess that it takes a time. Okay, it's almost impossible to implement this Riemann solver in the simulations, right? So then, so we need an approximate Riemann solver um, for the simulations. And the last 15 minutes, I'm gonna tell, to talk about the Riemann uh, the, the, the solver for the relative the uh, relativistic hydrodynamics case, uh, which is a more or less similar structure for the non-relativistic hydrodynamic case. Okay, let's see. Okay, thank you. Okay, in this, uh, so in this sample program, I also provided a couple of the, the, the option for the, uh, the time integrator, like RK4, RK3, and Riemann program, uh, Riemann solver for the LLF, HLE, HL, and HLLC, and cell reconstruction to obtain the left and the right state as a first order and a PPM. And more or less RK4 and PPM is uh, very similar to that non-relativistic one. So I'm gonna, uh, uh, I won't explain detail, but uh, also that there are uh, two options for the cell reconstruction at the uh, interface. I'm gonna explain a little also, anyway. So here's uh, you, define, you, you define the index for the X direction in, in example. So relatively large number, uh, 3,200, uh, 3,000 to 100 grid point in one directions. And also I define a numerical domain from zero to one. And here is a iteration number in terms of B. <laughs> and FBV is again the, the compression parameter for the PPM uh, reconstruction. For the third order case, uh, this should be from one to four, between the one to four, one and four. Um, yeah, then so, okay, let's go down, go down. Yeah, here, okay, here, here is a just copy from non relativistic one, define the X coordinate, and here is a, you determine the time step for the, the, the simulation by specifying the CL number, CFL number. And I, this is a sample for a couple of, okay, uh, okay. And here is uh, uh, the one example for the shock program, which finally result in a one shock wave and a one earlier function wave. And here is a two shock wave case, and here's a rear function wave. This is exactly the same as the, uh, the initial condition we specified in the uh, exact Riemann solver, relativistic Riemann.py. And then, so uh, you plug the left and the right state for uh, the primitive uh, variable, low B, X, I, B, Y, B, Z, and pressures. And from this primitive recovery, this is a, 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 a big change from non-relativistic uh, case. So the, you need a Lorentz factor for omega. It's a just Lorentz factors and internal energies, epsilon, and the specific uh, enthalpy H. Also the, the, uh, the sound velocity, yes. 
And if two is uh, divided, uh, defined as a P over D, uh, P over rho uh, divided by omega, uh, I'm gonna explain why I define this value later on. Anyways, from these uh, values, uh, from these uh, quantities, you can define the conserved quantities in a, in a relativistic hydrodynamics, right? Uh, uh, low, this, is not, uh, this is no longer low, but uh, low times uh, Lorentz factor, which I call the conserved, uh, conserved mass, and the momentum and the energies, a specific energy. <laughs> okay. And here is a more similar, just copy to from Q to the previous one. I just um, uh, zero clear for the, the Q, RK element, which is necessary, RK alloy, so which is necessary for the final step for the Lungic scheme. And define the, the sum coefficient and the, uh, the time step, blah, blah, blah. And here is a, uh, the store to, to the intermediate variable for the QB uh, for the current value. Then, so first, uh, we, uh, we're gonna construct the, the numerical flux at the interface. And here is a first order reconstruction, just copy from J and J minus one to the right and the left state. Or if you use a PPM reconstruction for the smooth pro profile, you, you may get a more you know, the accurate solution for the PPM reconstruction. Here, so this is a maybe a uh, very original one, but uh, so here, so I defined the two option. One is a self reconstruction general, and please go down. And the other one is a self reconstruction gamma row, because now you have uh, uh, the conserved quantities like a uh, low omega, low H omega U, uh, UI, and uh, H omega minus P or, yeah, no, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. So, okay. There are a couple of options for the relativistic hydrodynamics, how to calculate the primitive variables at the, the cell interface. So now you have a cell of a J, right? On the left and R state. So, First order PPM reconstruction. So we have a low omega and low omega H. Oh, sorry, I don't need that. H U I and H omega minus P over. But we don't know the information for the low densities omega and uh, uh, the specific entropy H, which is necessary to evaluate the physical flux of the interface. So this cell constructions underscore gamma law gives a use of the primitive recovery at the cell interface, assuming the gamma law equation state. So to do that, so, uh, so this is a procedure to solve the given these quantities and uh, some algebraic function for H omega and G omega square to zero, something like that. You can find this expression in the lecture note for the gamma equation of the state. And I use, I, I uh, solve the equation by the Newton Lapson method in here, right? Then, so after solving the, this Newton Lapson, uh, this primitive recovery, now you have a, uh, the Lorentz factor W, which is described WW in code. And then, so you can construct the epsilon and the internals, uh, internal uh, energies and P over low omega and blah, blah, blah. Then, so the sound velocity is calculated and the uh, left, sound, uh, left state of the physical flux is also calculated, something like this. Also, we can uh, calculate the, the eigenvalue for the left and right state by lambda plus, I mean, Lambda plus minus. This is a complex uh, the expression for Vx or something. Okay? And also contact to discontinuity is velocities. You can do the same things for the light state. Here is the light state. You solve the Newton Lapson uh, you solve the, uh, the, the primitive recovery by Newton Lapson method. And then so you have uh, the Lorentz factor and you can estimate the you know, the, the uh, relevant quantities to estimate the physical flux, okay? This is a one option. 
left. Okay. And then, okay, but in this case, so primitive recovery is a bit computational challenging because in every cell interface, you need to do the iterations for the nonlinear iteration, which means that you need a very, requires a high computational cost. And also in these schemes, I, implicit, I assume that explicitly assume the gamma row equation of the state. But uh, this is not general case, right? For example, for the tabulated equation of the state case, we cannot use this part. Instead of that, please go up, 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 up. So I prepared another branch, which called the cell construction under general. In this case, we don't perform the nonlinear iteration or primitive recovery at the cell interface. Instead of that, we define the P over rho omega as an independent variable here and here. And first, you reconstruct a P L and L, uh, R state of the P over rho omega, right? By using the, these quantities and by using the another quantities, you can estimate the, uh, the specific, en uh, sorry, specific entropy at the interface by these equations. For example, <laughs> in this example, the IPS L mean that the internal energy of the left state and uh, P rho L, P rho L is just P over rho omega of the left state uh, here. And E L, E L is just H omega minus P over rho omega of L. So as the density is, uh, energy density is given by this location, right? This one. By using the, these quantities from this from these equations, you can get the left state of the specific entropy given by these equations. I want uh, to I want uh, the, uh, prove that this expression is equivalent to here, but uh, you can do that. Uh, you can do it by yourself. Anyway, so now, so you have a left state specific entropy, so you can get the Lorentz factors at the left state, and now, so you can get the three velocities uh, in, uh, by the from the uh, four velocity uh, spatial component of the four velocities, right? <laughs> then, so left uh, the <clears throat> Then for the, the, uh, the left state of the sound velocities and the physical flux and uh, the, the characteristic velocities in the left state. You can do the same things for the light state, something like this. And now, so you have a physical flux in the left state and the physical flux for the light state and the characteristic uh, speed in the left and the right state. Okay, please go down. So now is uh, ready, we are ready to calculate uh, you make a flux and uh, first option is a LLF. It's a just a F is a just a physical flux underscore L or R is a left and right state. And the LLF is a simplified one, most simple as uh, uh, the simplest uh, option for the Riemann solver problem. Uh, you can take the absolute value of the left and the right propagating the wave, the wave, uh, wave speed pattern. And uh, by, by taking the arithmetic average of the left and the right state of the physical flux plus additional term, which is guaranteed uh, the uh, first order of wind uh, nature at the shock. And then so you can uh, get the physical flux for the local lux fluid scheme. 
HLEs are just taking account the information for the left and the right propagating waves independently, and you can guess that here. And the HLL is uh, you take into account uh, the, the, the layer function waves, left and uh, layer function wave case, something like this. So the final one is uh, just HLLC, which Restored. So HLL, HLE, and LLF, you completely ignore the internal structure of the linear pan. But HLLC restore the contact discontinuity, which appeared, appears inside the linear pan. So to obtain this structure, first you need to get the, uh, the, the characteristic speed of the, the contact discontinuity lambda C. Lambda C means lambda C by solving the, these equations. Uh, by solving these equations. And then so you can get the intermediate uh, pressure P total uh, inside the Riemann farm. So now, so you have, uh, uh, you, you are ready to calculate a shear state. Okay, shear state, maybe you don't remember. <coughs> Here is a generic left and right. For HLC, you have a contact discontinuity here, and here is a CL, and here is a CL state. So, because we know the total pressures inside the Riemann fan, you can get the, the uh, CL and the CL state from the ranking in relation for in this. Across this wave and across this wave. This is a consequence of the Lanky union relations. Then, so depending on the sign and uh, the uh, sign uh, for the lambda L, lambda, and lambda C, so you can guess that which is the case. In this example, the next step is a CL state. It's going to be the here, but the, if you have a lambda C is a here, maybe this is the case. Okay, anyway. And this is a physical uh, the, the scheme for uh, the, the HL she. So now you have uh, the physical flux, uh, numerical flux. Then you update the conserved quantities by these equations and by these equations. And you can also restore the, uh, the Runge Kutta for something like this. And then, so in this example, uh, I gave the copy boundary condition for a ghost uh, script. Then, so now we have a conserved quantity at the cell, inch, uh, cell, uh, cell centers. So then, so for the next step, we have to convert this conserved quantity to the uh, primitive recovery. This, is, this part gives the primitive recovery, uh, uh, conserved to the pressure, uh, low on omega, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and but, this is a practical, uh, in a practical situation, the convergence is not guaranteed. And in particular for the very low densities and very high velocity, uh, high velocity the situation, sometimes uh, this Newton Lapson, uh, the, the Newton Lapson or nonlinear root finding fail. In that case, so this is, Okay, in that case, we have to seek you know, some prescription to continue the simulation. Otherwise, the continuation stops and uh, you can't write the paper. So how to do that? So uh, this is just one example for the gamma rho equation case. If the iteration is greater than some critical number, like a 20, in my experience, if the iteration is, uh, the, uh, the neutral option doesn't converge within the 10 iteration, you can get, you cannot get the physical answer forever, whatever. So if you, even if you do that iteration of one thousand, something like that. And then, so that if the iteration is greater than some critical number, or if the Lorentz factor, convergent Lorentz factor, is less than one, which is obviously a physical solution, you need some prescription to continue the simulation. In this example, I gave I gave you this one example, <coughs> one, one, one prescription in which we kill the velocity field because and, and empirically we know that this problematic point appears on very low densities and very high, you know, the velocity regions. So in such a region, so we kill uh, the, the, uh, the velocities first. 
Then by killing the velocities, moment, killing a velocity of momentum, and the, the Lorentz factor is set to be one, right? Uh, so if, because the uh, Lorentz factor is a unity, the here, epsilon, epsilon is a uh, internal energy, and the conserved quantity is H omega minus P over rho omega. This is we call the Q5 in this case. It's going to one plus epsilon because omega equal one, right? But then so epsilon is calculated to form the conserved quantities five minus one. Then so the uh, this is only for the gamma rho equation sake of girls. For the, the specific entropy is reconstructed by this and density is by this, and epsilon two is a P over rho omega is by this, and pressure is just pressures, and uh, velocities and the three velocities and uh, the sound velocities or something like this. This is just one example for the prescription, but uh, to solve the relative Riemann's program, and this prescription is good enough to continue the simulation. So this is a um, um, uh, whole the, uh, the structure for the approximate Riemann solver in HL uh, in, in HL LRE and LRF and HLC. So by changing the some compression parameters on the, uh, the Riemann solver or reconstruction scheme or you know maybe the shear number or grid numbers or whatever, so you can play with uh, this sample code and just compare the exact solution for the Lima problem with the Python script. Okay, and this is the whole explanation for the sample code. So the tutorial of the today is just by just continuing the, you know, the tutorial from one to four, writing the code from scratch, or just play, you know, the uh, play with this sample code by changing the default setup. That's, Oh, and this is my last lectures. If you have a question, if you don't have questions, okay, let's go to the coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this concludes the last lecture of this course. Uh, many thanks again to Kenta for taking out a lot of his precious time in designing and delivering this course, I hope. You all gained a lot from it. So let's thank Kenta once thank again. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>